It's the gospel truth. It's the word of the Lord. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's a two-way sword. It's a road map to heaven. And it's heaven's good news. Thank God for the Bible. It's the gospel truth. It's time for the Gospel Truth with Dr. Scott Thomas of Temple, Georgia. For more information about the ministry and the music of Brother Scott, go each week to www.scottthomasministries.com. That's www.scottthomasministries.com. You can get more messages and music at the website. So be sure to go to www.scottthomasministries.com once every week. And now, here is Dr. Scott Thomas and the Gospel Truth. Ezra chapter number 7. I'm preaching this morning on Ezra's example for a new year. Ezra's example for a new year. And in Ezra chapter number 7 and verse 9, we see it's a new year for him, for it says here, For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon. That tells me the first day of the first month, that's a brand new year. And on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem according to the good hand of his God upon him. Verse number 10, this is where I'm going to concentrate mostly today. I'm real interested in this verse. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your sweet Holy Spirit and those who are with us today. Those we've missed that are back today, I pray, God, that you just bless each and every one that are here today. Those that would like to be with us today, God, that's unable to make it, I ask you, Lord, to touch them in a special way and help them, Lord, and strengthen them, help them get over the sickness and the problems they're facing. God, we thank you, Lord, for all your goodness and your power, Lord. I ask you, God, now to bless the reading of your word. Help me to preach. Lord, I pray, God, that if there's any sin in my life or anything wrong that would hinder me preaching the gospel, or you blessing it, Lord, with your anointing and your touch, God, I pray, remove it from me and help me to be the man you'd have me to be and to preach in the way you'd have me to preach. And just bless today, God, if there's any that's lost, God, any that needs you, Lord, I pray they come and get things right with you. We'll give you the praise for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated this morning. God wants us to be some things in this new year. And I think we see a good example here in Ezra's life of what we ought to be. By the way, I just want to say, first of all, God wants us to be a saved person. If you're not saved, God wants you to be saved. Amen? And salvation comes through a birth. Uh, to be born again. And it comes to a belief. You've got to believe upon the Lord. God wants us not only to be a saved person, He wants us to be a spiritual person. I want you to be a spiritual person, but God wants you to be a spiritual person that loves the Savior, loves the Scripture, loves the saints, loves the sanctuary, amen, loves the sinners, Amen. That's what a spiritual person is. And God wants us to be saved and spiritual. God also wants us to be a sensitive person, to be sensitive to the Savior, to be sensitive to the Spirit, the servant, and the saints. Amen. God wants this for us. God wants us to be a stable person. We need to get stable, grounded, and growing in the Lord. And then God wants us to be a serving person, somebody that serves Christ, somebody that serves the church. Ezra gives us an example of how we can be saved, spiritual, sensitive, and a serving person if we will. Now I want you to notice here, Ezra started this journey upon the first day of the first month. And he was going from Babylon to Jerusalem. And uh, the Lord had led him in that direction. I want you to notice 
said, it said that the good hand of his God was upon him. That's a good way to start out the new year. Yeah. Is having the good hand of God upon your life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I don't want to start 2015 any other way. But I want God to have his hand upon me. I want God to have his hand upon you. And he will if you let him. Amen. Amen. Ezra had the hand of God upon him. And he started on the first day of the first month of, the, of this year. And it's a great example of how we ought to start out the new year and start with the good hand of God upon us. And by the way, uh, it took Ezra five months to get where God wanted him to be so he could do what God wanted him to do. Amen. Ezra's example. I want to get through this. I, I, I got a lot to say. I'll get through it as soon as I can here. But first of all, I want you to notice Ezra's preparation. Ezra made some preparation. Look at verse 10. It said, For Ezra had prepared his heart. Amen. <coughs> the best way to start this new year is to prepare your heart. Prepare your heart concerning God's salvation. 2 Corinthians 6 and 2 says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. If you need to be saved, if you need to get your heart right with God, today's the day of salvation. And the best way to prepare your heart is to prepare your heart concerning God's salvation. What does salvation do for you? First of all, salvation gives you confidence. It'll give you confidence in Christ. There's nothing like knowing that you're born again and saved by the grace of God and having confidence in Christ that you are right with God. Hey, I know where I'm going when this life is over, when it's my time to breathe my last breath. I know that I'll go to heaven, man. I know I'll be right with the Lord. I know I'll be in His will and His way, amen. Thank God today salvation will give you confidence in Christ and it'll give you confidence in church. You know, a lot of folks, they go to church and they kind of bash them they kind of want to duck their head because they know their heart's not right with God and they all know where they all be with God. But I'm telling you, when you get salvation in your life, you can go into church and raise your head up high and raise your heart up and raise your hand. salvation in your life so you can have confidence in Christ in the church. Salvation gives you courage. It gives you courage concerning the devil. You can fight the devil when you got salvation in your life. And concerning your duties, you can do what God wants you to do and, and work for Him. And, and, and it'll give you courage to do those things. Hey, I, I was noticing this morning, I, I, I kind of figured out uh, uh, Brother Josh over there, he's kind of bashful, kind of bad
tribulations. Preparing your heart concerning God's Spirit. Psalms 51, 10 through 11. says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Boy, that's a prayer we need to be praying, is it not? Concerning God's Spirit. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I want your Holy Spirit, Lord. I need it with me. Hey, we must ask God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, do that before the Sunday school starts. Amen. Before it begins. Do it before the service begins. The, the sermon begins. The singing begins. Ask God. Say, Lord, send your Holy Spirit my way. If you don't want it, I do. Hey, friend, let me tell you something. We can't have church. We cannot have church without the Holy Spirit. And friend, we need to prepare our hearts concerning God's Spirit. Did you come here today with your head down? Did you come here thinking about everything else but I call to church? I don't know about you, but I came this way to worship the Lord. I came here to lift Him up. to more 
our ungodliness. Amen. That's what the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.16. But in 1 Thessalonians 4.11, I told you to study to be calm. I got it right out of the Word of God. It said study to be quiet. Friend, if you're quiet, you're calm. Some people are not calm. They want to run off the mouth and, and fuss and argue and all that sort of things and profane uh, talk and vain babblings uh, and all they can do uh, is fuss and talk and, uh, and, and cause trouble and stir up trouble. But the Bible said study to be quiet and do your own business. Amen. Uh, keep up with your own business. Get out of everybody else's business uh, and live for God. Amen. Uh, and the Lord Stop their dialect. Amen. Their dialogue, if you will. Hey, they need to hush their mouth. He said no for vain and vain, vain babblings. And you know what? A lot of folks, they need to stop their profane and vain babblings and keep their mouth shut and stop their dialect on the computer. Amen. Amen. We'll get on the Facebook and we'll get on the Scripture 
read that word of God, he'll encourage you. Amen. Like as a study and search God's law. So Ezra first prepared his heart, and then second of all, he pursued. He pursued the Bible. Notice Ezra's practice. Look at the very next phrase in our verse here that we're studying. You all right with me this morning? Yes. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. Look at this next little phrase. Just four little words. And to do it. Those four little words are the words that messes up a lot of people. They prepare their hearts. They're ready to pursue. But then they give up and never do it. But that ain't what Ezra did. He did it. It's one thing to go to the altar and say, hey, Lord, come to my life and save me and I want to live right and make my heart right and God does that for you. And you say, I'm going to pursue the Word of God and I'm going to go after the Word of God and I'm going to get this thing right and I'm going to get in here and do right. But then, a lot of people mess up because they never do it. They never do it. They never practice it. Ezra put it into practice. And it ain't just for one day or, or, or one week, but it's week after week, day after day after day. That's how you practice. If you won't get good at something, you won't be a good Christian, you won't get good at being a Christian. Friend, let me tell you how. Practice it every day. Practice it every day. Ezra put into practice what he prepared his heart to do and what he was pursuing. Preparing and pursuing will not benefit without practice. So here's some things to practice this new year. Let me give you some things to practice this new year. Practice supplication in this new year. Supplication is praying. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Get to praying and practicing, amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know what prayer is? Prayer is calling. It calls for help. It calls for hope. It calls for heaven. And the day you can come to this altar and you can pray and you can call for these things. Prayer is communication. Communicate with the sovereign. That's God. Communicate with the Savior. Communicate with the Spirit. That's what prayer will do. You get to praying and calling on God and you can communicate. Prayer is confessing. Prayer is confessing. And every day we need to be confessing. <laughs> every day. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What do you confess? But you confess your faults. Confess your fetters. I didn't say feathers. Fetters. What are feathers? Sin. That's what it means. Confess your fetters. Confess your failures. Go to God, practice this every day and say, Lord, forgive me of my faults, my failures, and my failures. Now that's all the negative that we need to confess. But there is one positive you need to confess. There's a, uh, there's a positive thing you need to confess. What is it? Confess your faith. Amen. Confess your faith. Go to God and say, I believe in you, Lord. Yes. I'm trusting in you, Lord. And I confess you as my Savior, my God. And I want to trust you and live for you. Confess it on a daily basis. I'm trying to give you something to help you on you. Help you throughout 2015. If you would just do these things. I'm not asking for a resolution. I'm asking for you to repent and to get right and to live these things for God. Confess. That's prayer. Prayer is confessing, communicating, calling. Prayer is commitment. 
It's committed to be dedicated and determined for God. So I'm asking, are you practicing prayer? Are you a practicing prayer warrior for God? It will make a difference in your year. Practice supplication in this new year. Number two, practice steadfastness. Steadfastness in this new year. Being steady. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Be steady in Christ. Be steady in church. Amen. Do you know what most people do? They're not steady. I'll tell you that. They're up one day and down the next. Up one day and down the next. And I want to be that steady person. In church every Sunday, based on good health, steady in my living, steady in living right, steady in doing right, steady in my reading of the Word of God, steady in my prayer life, be steady in Christ, be steady church. I'll be steady with my time for the Lord. I'll be steady with my ties for the Lord. Amen. Somebody say amen right there. I want to be steady in my testimony for the Lord. Ezra back made his five month journey. Took him five months to get to Babylon to Israel. Because on the first day of the first month, God said, I want you to leave Babylon and I want you to go to Israel. And it took him five months. You know why he got there? Because he was steady. He didn't get along the way that first day. He said, boy, it's a long way. I'm going to wonder what I'm doing this. I'm going back. He didn't go after one month and say, man, I've been traveling and going and going. And, and this is getting old. They never going to make it. No, he just kept being steady. He kept being steady. Are you steady? Ezra's given us a good example here. And he put it into practice. He did what he pursued. Finally, notice Ezra's proclamation. The latter part of this verse. This is all in one verse now. Look at that. And to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. Ezra took this long, long, long journey. It took him five months. Just to get where God wanted him to be. And once he got there, notice this. Ezra didn't get there. He didn't just go there. And say, well, finally made it. Thank God for that. I quit. I'm done. That's been a long journey. I'm through with it. That ain't what he did. He didn't sit down and just quit on God once he got there. He wasn't done. He wasn't through. The Bible says he taught in Israel statutes and judgments. See, the problem is too many people get overwhelmed by the steps. They're taking steps and taking steps and they look ahead and they say there's a lot more steps and they think, boy, this is too much. I can't do it. And they give up and they turn on God and then their life gets in a mess. And then those who pursue the steps and get all the way through the steps and, and they keep their eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on Him and have faith in Him and just keep walking. You know what? You won't notice your steps in walking from the looking toward Him. Amen. You won't notice how many steps there is. You keep on for God that way, just keeping your eyes on Him. Amen. And he, but some people get overwhelmed by the steps, but other people, once they get through all the steps and they finally make it to the destination, they get overwhelmed by the success. They get there and they say, boy, look what I did. And they get to looking back and say, look at all that journey. Look at all those steps I took. Look
look what I did. And they get so overjoyed over the success of just getting where God wants them to be that they quit. Well, I've done all I can do for the Lord. I've made it through the steps. I've arrived. I've made it. And then they quit on God. Have you quit on God? It's time to pick up and get back where He wants you to be. Amen. Some people don't finish what God wants them to do once they get where God wants them to be. Does God have you where He wants you to be this morning? Are you where you ought to be with the Lord? Some of you are, no. You're a church where a year ago we wasn't a church. You've grown spiritually. You've grown and you've gotten grounded in the Word where a year ago or two years ago you wasn't. But now God's finally got you where He wants you. Don't quit now. Amen. Don't quit now. Don't give up now. Notice what Ezra did. He just did what God wanted to do once he got there. Like Ezra, we must finish what God wants us to do for Him. Notice two things in the book. Ezra proclaimed the commands. Ezra proclaimed the commands. Notice this. He taught statutes in Israel, the Bible says. What is the statutes? That's the rules. And people need to hear about the rules. They need to hear about the Lord's rules. And they need to know about the living rules, how to live. Guess what? Ezra got every bit of his information right out of the Word of God. Amen. 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 He taught the Lord's rules and the living rules. The statutes. Amen. People need to hear about the rules. People need to hear about the righteousness. That's statutes. Righteousness obtained through God. Righteousness obtained through grace. And then people need to hear about the Redeemer. That statute, he's all in this book. The Redeemer. Tell them about their loss. Tell them about their love. And then tell them about the Lord. You see, we don't need to leave any of that out. People need to know their loss. But the people also need to know their love. Amen. But most of all, they need to know about the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hey, if they only know the loss and they never see the love of the Lord, they'll never get saved. Amen. But if you'll love them, tell them about the Lord, they can get right with God. Ezra proclaimed the commands, the statutes. But then Ezra proclaimed the consequences. So he didn't just tell the rules, he told the consequences. He taught judgments, the Bible said, in Israel. Listen here, no one will ever keep the commandments if they do not know and do not fear the consequences. Amen? Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Hey, we've got a rule book here. we got something to go by, to live by, and to, and to do right by. But why in the world will we do it if we don't fear the consequences? We never hear about the judgment and the judgments. Amen. Ezra proclaimed the consequence of the judgments. Live in the statutes. In other words, live in the scripture. Live by these statutes and the judgment will be heaven. Amen. Amen. Live right. Living right allows you to live in heaven. Living redeemed allows you to live in heaven. But there's a flip side of that. Don't live by this scripture. In other words, live in sins. By the way, you can live in sin. Some of you probably do. But I'm here to tell you today, you don't have to. You can get your heart right with God today. You can get this hold and say, God, I've been nothing but a sorry little damn sinner. I've been living in sin. But today I want to live in your statutes. I want to live in your scripture. I want to live in salvation. You don't have to live in sin. You don't have to live that life anymore. You don't have to. But if you choose to continue to live in sin, then the judgment will not be heaven. The judgment will
belief it leads to the torment, life, and hell. Satanic living leads to a trapment, being trapped in hell. Amen. So, today I've come here to tell you not only the commands, but to tell you the consequences as ever did. Because the sinner needs to know it. The saints need to know it. But most of all, self needs to know it. Every day I've got to keep going over these statutes, these commands. In my heart, in my head, in reading the Word of God, go over these commands, go over these consequences. That's how you stay living right. That's how you know you're right with God. Amen. Ezra 7 and 10, For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. You've been listening to The Gospel Truth with Dr. Scott Thomas of Temple, Georgia. To order this message or to contact Brother Scott, go to www.scottthomasministries.com. That's www.scottthomasministries.com. Be sure to come back next week for more Bible preaching and The Gospel Truth. Yes, I love my Bible, because it's the gospel.